I'm Daniel Baum, and I'm a student at Georgia Tech, and over the past semester, I studied coffee and coffee shop culture. Over this time, I noticed that a lot of people drink coffee on a daily basis. Personally, I don't drink coffee, but I wondered why so many people drink it. After some research, I found that an addiction to coffee is common. This addiction is more than what you see on the surface. Caffeine is the most commonly used drug in the world, according to a study from the University of Cambridge. Chemically, caffeine is a compound that stimulates the brain in such a way that makes people feel more alert, irritable, and increases heart rate. It also kind of looks like cocaine. Comparing coke to caffeine regarding how much it takes to kill you, cocaine is only 5 to 10 times more dangerous than caffeine. Regular caffeine consumption, usually created by coffee, typically leads to an addiction in one way or another. Negatives of this addiction include increased risk for osteoporosis, increased blood pressure, difficulty sleeping, and depression, according to an article from fittoday.com. The decaffeination process removes most of the caffeine from coffee beans, but not all of it. A decaf coffee has about the same amount of caffeine as a regular Coke. Decaf is recommended for those who are prone to anxiety, stress, depression, sleep issues, and chronic headaches, as most of these symptoms are caused by caffeine. Decaf coffee has never really gained popularity. According to a study by the National Coffee Association in 2009, decaf coffee, on average, is only consumed by 7% of the coffee drinking population. That's about 1 in every 12 coffee drinkers who prefers decaf over regular coffee. That means nearly 11 out of 12 coffee drinkers are fueled by caffeine. In a positive feedback loop, people who already drink coffee convince themselves that they need it in order to function. Then they drink it, and as a result, they feel better. So they drink coffee the next day and the next day, and this loop feeds itself. Regular coffee drinkers believe that coffee is the nectar of the gods. People that rely on coffee on a regular basis probably won't admit that they have a problem. They probably won't even acknowledge that they could have a problem. This denial leads coffee addicts to think that giving up on their coffee dependence is simple. They just need to stop drinking it. Well, quitting caffeine can be far more difficult than expected. When a coffee addict stops drinking coffee, they go through withdrawal symptoms. That's right, withdrawal. Symptoms include a lack of alertness, fogginess, headaches, and fatigue. Luckily, these symptoms only last for about a week. There's a scientific reason behind this withdrawal dealing with adenosine receptors in the brain due to increased caffeine intake, but I won't get into all that. Studies on the effect of coffee on health have concluded that coffee should not be drank in any form, decaf or regular. The addiction to coffee is much like that of tobacco, leaving the user feeling like they should quit, but they have a hard time doing so due to a combination of cravings and withdrawal symptoms. It's a cycle after all. This is the struggle of trying to quit. Well, coffee isn't all bad. According to an article from Authority Nutrition, coffee can reduce the risk of diabetes and is shown to prevent cancer. Plus, all that caffeine helps you burn more energy throughout the day, and it can make it easier to lose weight. Coffee can fight depression and contribute to overall better heart health. Apart from the chemical nature of coffee, the coffee house itself is something special. Once you enter, you pass an aromatic wall of freshly ground coffee beans, hear the soothing music in the background, see the mesmerizing displays behind the counter. This sensory shock places you in another world. The coffee shop world. This coffee world becomes something you don't want to leave, something separate from regular life. The coffee shop world is addictive. People go to a shop and spend hours per week. Some people even spend hours per day in a coffee shop. The coffee shop becomes more like a second home to a coffee addict. A regular coffee drinker doesn't just go to any coffee shop. Most likely, they go out of their way to go to their favorite coffee shop. A regular coffee drinker is addicted to their brand, whatever that may be. Starbucks, Dunkin' Donuts, McDonald's. They have a preference and they're always trying to fulfill their coffee needs. Starbucks is one of the most popular coffee brands in the world. According to the brand experience model, 
Brand recognition has three major features, products, personal interactions, and overall experience. Starbucks works hard to keep all three parts of their brand image alive and thriving. And it's definitely working. A morning coffee ritual has a direct correlation to drug dependency, like that of heroin and cocaine. This addiction doesn't create compulsion on the level of heroin or cocaine, but it does create some compulsion. Too much caffeine consumption can cause headaches, nausea, shaking, and even bursts of energy. So you like your coffee, and you like the overall experience of your favorite coffee shop. Well, regular caffeine consumption from coffee leads the body to rely less and less on its own natural source of energy. You don't notice this because after your third cup, the day seems to be going just fine, but you will crash. The coffee only lasts so long. Coffee is not all bad, but it's definitely not all good. Coffee is one of those gray areas where most people only try to see the good or only try to see the bad, you know? Like, they know that drinking six cups a day can't be good for them, but they try to convince themselves that they don't have a problem. Coffee is here to stay, and it won't be phased out anytime soon. It is not a stage in the American people. Coffee runs in our veins. Well, assuming people are alive before they drink their coffee. To me, coffee may not be the best tasting drink, but it sure does help people get through their day. Overall, coffee has positive and negative effects on the body. But coffee isn't about the individual aspects like caffeine, taste, culture, or branding. Coffee is an experience that is more than the sum of its parts. When everything comes together, coffee is something that this world can't seem to live without.